avid outdoors woman, and I would go hiking and hear things. And I'm curious, and so I'd always want to know what I heard. And that's what started me, it's just a curiosity of what was around me. When I moved to Wyoming and got a horse and went out and started hiking and skiing, all of a sudden I started noticing birds. You know, hawks, eagles, big birds, and little songbirds as well. So that kind of piqued my curiosity. Of course, you know, all of us are always interested in birds ever since we're little kids, all of us. Um, we have a natural curiosity for birds. Our Wyoming joined the Bighorn Audubon Society on one of their regular Birding at the Brinton Bird Walks. It serves as an opportunity for birders to get together at a uniquely rich location in terms of bird habitat and observe. Today we went out and we looked at resident birds, we looked at short distance migrants and long distance migrants. And the, the resident birds are mainly the woodpeckers, the chickadees, the dipper here. And even the great blue heron stays here year round. Short distance migrants, the yellow rump warbler is a classic one. Uh, they migrate short distance and that means to the southern United States. And then we have the long distance migrants, the osprey is one, and a smaller one, the Swainson's thrush. They're both long distance migrants. And so what they do is they migrate outside of the United States, often to Mexico, Central and South America. Regular birding walks, like birding at the Brinton, are great ways for people to test their interest in the hobby. Carol joined the group for the first time. It's neat to be around people that enjoy being outside, um, seeing the birds and being able to tell their calls and what they look like. And I'm hoping that if I continue to do this, I'll be able to learn a lot and be one of the persons that can help others later on. But I, I like going with all the people. It's a social thing as well as birding. You learn the birds, but it's a social get together too. The social aspect of birding is like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. Birds, they are so beautiful. They migrate, they sing, and collectively, they just offer such incredible opportunities. And one of them is being together in a common theme. Most beginning birders start out with visuals. And a friend of mine a few years ago gave me a three CD set of Western bird songs. And my husband and I will actually drive around and listen to Western bird song CDs. And in doing that, I started learning the songs. Because if you had to come out here and you heard birds, but you didn't know what they were, it'd probably drive you crazy. And it does as a new birder. First thing that you need is a pair of binoculars, and you can get them at a pawn shop. You don't need to go out and get a, you know, a, an expensive pair of binoculars. The other thing you need is a bird book, and a bird book will allow you to see in color, which is what most people prefer, what you are seeing, and it'll also give you a range map of where this bird is seen. That's very important. Much of the bird watching community has also embraced technology to aid their identification and recording of the birds they observe. So there's an app um, and it's called Merlin. And it's one of my favorite apps on the phone. And it actually has what the bird looks like in color. And it has sound and it has a range map. And those are really the three, all the three things that you really need to identify it. And that app is free and it's called Merlin. There's a, a Merlin Bird ID app. Um, the eBird app is amazing because it also feeds into other apps such as Birds Near Me that tell you where hot spots are and what birds are being seen in them. So if you're a new birder, those are three things I'd look at are Merlin's Bird ID, the eBird website and app, and the Birds Near Me app. In these odd times, many have found birding to be a great way to get out and enjoy the outdoors, whether by themselves or by social distance with other birders. For many, it has served as a meditative, soothing, centering activity. Birding at the Britain started out with two people, three people, and now it's about 25. 
and people really look forward, especially now in these times. You know, you notice today people wore a mask. They were very careful, but they were so excited to see one another because this is a, a difficult and lonely time. And so birding adds a dimension of togetherness and love. Because people have been sequestered in their homes, they're spending more time in their homes and in their yards, and they're able to notice birds more. I think it's been one of the good things that we can look at with COVID. People can get out in the outdoors and get fresh air, exercise, see birds. It just, it brings joy to your heart when you see something that's beautiful and, and just untouched. I've heard a lot of people who have PTSD and you know, things like they were in Afghanistan or whatever, they come back and they are searching for something that helps them get over that PTSD or that medical issue, and birding is one of those things that has been um, helpful in that regard. Audubon has many chapters throughout the state of Wyoming and throughout the United States, and I would suggest getting in contact with your local Audubon group. And if you don't have an Audubon group, start one or start a group with friends. Just go out and say, say, would you like to go birding tonight? I personally joined the Audubon, National Audubon Society a couple years ago. And when you do join the National Audubon Society, you are um, just put right into your local chapter. And the purpose of Audubon in general is to protect birds and their habitats for the betterment of birds, habitats, and our community. And so habitat is one of the keys. So when birds get forced into a small area, how big of an area does it take to create a situation where a bird can't breed? And that's kind of what's happening. If wetland isn't large enough, if a grassland isn't large enough, if a stand of old growth is not old growth, and if it's not large enough, those dynamics really change. And so that's why habitat protection is, it's the key. One way that local Audubon chapters help to protect birds and their habitats is by doing coordinated bird counts. These help chart the movement and quantity of birds at specific times. There are several different counts that we do around here. We do the spring migratory count. We also do the Christmas bird count, which is big. And then there's a breeding bird survey. And then there's also the big backyard count, too. We need to see the ebbs and the flows of the bird count, what's coming, what's going you know, how the species changing, what's the climate changes, whether it's man-made or natural, it does affect the birds. And that's what we're monitoring. All this information is handed over to Wyoming Game and Fish. And then from there, they disperse it with the federal government agencies. And each one of them is, the main purpose is science. And the bonus is we have a lot of fun doing it. People's interest in birds take many forms. Rosie uses her passion for observing birds to create beautiful works of art. Since I have the opportunity to take pictures of birds and I'm an artist, those photographs I take become beautiful paintings in my studio. I like painting with oil. I like using my own photographs. Um, just last week, I, there was a meadowlark out singing, so I was able to photograph him and yesterday in my studio I've already started painting that that picture of the meadow lark. So the most fun part is when I'm painting, I when I start painting the eye, the whole bird comes alive. So I try to do that early in in the painting. So and once you catch the sparkle in the eye, then the bird comes alive. I just feel like it's important when you are an artist to paint what you love. It comes from your heart, and since I love birds, I think it comes through with the color and the feeling and the sweetness. My advice for people that would like to get into birding is just get out, go for a hike, get some fresh air and sunshine and exercise, and keep your eyes and your ears open. You can look for birds, you can listen for birds, you can go out by yourself, you can go out with friends, you know, just any time is a good time to go birding. In the front of the New York Times recently, uh, Sibley wrote about uh, how birding can heal you. Birding can heal you because you focus on something that's beautiful, you listen and you're, 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 you pay attention to what's in front of you. And so it's almost, you know, I don't meditate, but when I bird, I just totally get in a zone of concentration. And it really helps focus your mind and focus your attention. And oftentimes, 
people that I bird with, we talk about how lucky we are to have found something that we love so much and have a passion for because it does center you in place with the natural environment, with something that's beautiful and touches you and it just can't be replaced. <laughs>